Welcome back to Mr. Scott Maps. In this video, we're going to take a look at multiplying and dividing powers. Though if there are any other topics you'd like me to cover, just leave a comment down below and I'll get to that video as soon as I can. So if we first of all take a look at this question here, we've got x squared multiplied by x cubed. And what we want to get out of the end of it is a single power of x. So what we can do is we can think of these as, well, what does x squared actually mean? Well, x squared means x times x. So we could write this out in full. So x times x. And we're multiplying this by x cubed. Well, that's x times x times x. Three x's all multiplied together. So it's going to be x times x times x times x times x. One, two, three. So what we've got left is we've got five x's all multiplied together which we can write simply as x to the power of 5. And that would be our final answer, x to the power of 5. Now, we didn't necessarily have to do this middle step where we wrote them all out in full. Because what we could have noticed is that our two powers, 2 and 3, if we just added them together, we get our final power of 5. So when we're multiplying with these powers, all we need to do is to add these two powers together and it gives us our final power. However, this only works where our base number is the same. So our base number is whatever number our x would be here. It has to be the same on both sides, else it wouldn't work. So for example, if we had 2 squared times 2 cubed, we get 2 to the power of 5. But if we had 2 squared times 3 cubed, we couldn't do anything with that. Okay, this next example, we have x to the power of 4 times x to the power of minus 6. So what we want to do is we'll have x to the power of, and it's going to be adding our two powers in our original question. So 4, and we're adding in negative 6. Well, if we're starting off at 4 and we're adding a negative 6, rather than going up, we're actually going to go down. So we're going to go down 6 from 4, effectively doing 4, take away 6 in this example. And we'll end up with an answer of x to the power of minus 2. In this next example, we have 5x to the power of 4 multiplied by 6x to the power of 5. Now, you may think that we have different base numbers here when we see where we've got 5x and we've got a 6x. But what we've got to remember is that using our bib mass, we've got to do our powers first. So that means this power of 4 is only relating to our x. So it's going to be 5 multiplied by x to the power of 4. And we could rewrite this if we wanted to. We could change it to 5 times x to the power of 4 times 6 times x to the power of 5. And we separate out this 5x to the power of 4 and the 6x to the power of 5. Well, now what we've got is we've got two numbers that we can multiply together. 5 times 6 gives us 30. And then we've got our powers. We've got x to the power of 4 times x to the power of 5. Well, we know we can just add these two powers because our base numbers are the same. 4 add 5 gives us 9. So we have 30x to the power of 9. Now let's look at division. Well, in this case, we've got x to the power of 7 divided by x to the power of 3. And again, we can start off by writing these out in full. So x to the power of 7 means 7x's seven all multiplied together. So that's 1, 2, 3... 4, 5, 6, and 7. We've got x times x times x times x times x times x times x. And that's all going to be divided by this x cubed, x to the power of 3. So that's 3x's all multiplied together. So x times x times x. And now what we can do is we can simply cancel three of these x's from the top and the bottom. Of course, x divided by x would just give us one. So we can cancel this pair, we can cancel this pair, and we can cancel this pair. And now we just need to look at what we have left over. We've got one, two, three, four x's left. They're all multiplied together. So our answer will be x to the power of four. Now, similarly to when we were multiplying, there's a little trick we could have done instead. What we could have noticed is that these two powers, 7 and 3, well, if we did 7 subtract 3, that would give us 4, which, look here, is the power that we get in our answer. 
And again, what we've got to remember is this only works when we've got our same base numbers. So for example, if we had two to the power of seven divided by two to the power of three, that would give us an answer of two to the power of four. However, if we had two to the power of seven divided by three to the power of three, that wouldn't work. In this next example, we have x to the power of eight divided by x to the power of minus four. Well, we can see that our base numbers are the same. We've got x for both. So what we can do is we can just subtract our powers. So we could have x to the power of eight minus this negative four. And of course, if we're subtracting a negative, that effectively means we're doing an add. So eight add four would give us 12. So our answer would be x to the power of 12. Now in this final example, we have 15x to the power of nine divided by five x to the power of six. And remembering this doesn't mean our base numbers are different because this x to the power of nine and x to the power of six, they're done separately from our 15 and our five. So we've got two numbers here that we can divide. 15 divided by 5, that will give us 3. And then we've got x to the power of 9 divided by x to the power of 6. Well, we're dividing, so we subtract our powers. 9 take away 6 will give us 3. So our answer is going to be 3x to the power of 3, or 3x cubed. Now there's going to be some questions for you to have a go at. The first of these questions is x to the power of 7 multiplied by x to the power of 5. And you need to turn this into a single power of x. You just want to pause the video for a moment and have a go at this and i'll go through it in just a moment okay so in this question we've got our same base numbers and we're multiplying so all we've got to do is add our two powers so our answer is going to be x to the power of seven plus five well seven plus five gives us 12 so we get in total x to the power of 12. The next question for you to have a go at is 7x to the power of 9 multiplied by 3x to the power of negative 3. Again, just pause the video for a moment, have a go at this question, and I'll go through it in just a second. So to work this one out, we might want to write these out a little bit more fully. So 7x to the power of 9, we can write it out 7 times x to the power of 9. And then 3x to the power of minus 3, we can write as 3 times x to the power of negative 3. Now we've got two numbers we can multiply together. 7 times 3 will give us 21. And now we've got our two powers of x. x to the power of 9 and x to the power of negative 3. We've got the same base number. We're multiplying, so we need to add our two powers. Well, 9 add a negative 3. We're going to start at 9 and then go down by 3, so we'll end up at 6. So we get an answer of 21x to the power of 6. Now for a couple of questions on division. The first question, x to the power of 11 divided by x to the power of 5. If you just want to pause the video for a moment, have a go at this question, and then I'll go through it. So for this question, we're dividing, and we have the same base number, so all we need to do is subtract our powers. So we'll have x to the power of 11 subtract 5. Well, 11 subtract 5 gives us 6, so our answer will be x to the power of 6. Now for the final question, this one, we have 12x to the power of 10 divided by 3x to the power of negative 2. Again, just pause the video for a moment, have a go at this question, and I'll go through it in a second. So again, we want to first of all work out our numbers. So 12 divided by 3 is going to give us 4. And now we have x to the power of 10 divided by x to the power of negative 2. Well, we've got the same base number and we're dividing our powers, so we need to subtract. So 10 minus a negative 2, well, that's going to work out the same as 10 add 2. And we get an answer of 4x to the power of 12. Make sure to like and subscribe for more maths videos.